Hi guys, it is another just yuck, gray, gloomy, depressing day here in the end times in paradise in uh, Garfield, Texas on this gloomy Wednesday morning. Well, now it's 11.59 a.m. Uh, on February 14th, 2018. So, uh, most of the planet is either has their head buried in the Olympics or just uh, looking at their depressing love life today on one of the most depressing days of the year. I'm doing what I do every Wednesday morning other than whining about my defunct love life, which is 365 days a year. Uh, I am going to bring you my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant. And uh, I don't know, guys, here in uh, mid February 2018, I've been doing these climate change rants now for. Uh, I need to go get my bullshit extra button and my no shit Sherlock button. I've been doing these climate change meltdown roundup rants good god for eight years and i gotta say that maybe this one is the most we are so fucked one yet and we're gonna start out with many versions of this story this is from the worse than we thought department every single week week after week month after month year after year i'm coming on here bringing these climate stories and ev virtually every bit of new research coming in is saying it is worse than the worst case scenarios. You know, these models 20, 25 years ago predicting the worst case scenarios and now they, uh, with actual on the ground data, you know, these aren't models, these are based on, on, on looking uh, back in the past 20 years and seeing that the models that were looking forward were, were full of shit. And uh, so anyone who acts like the uh, mainstream media is not alarmist enough, let's go over there to the Daily Mail over there in England. The Daily Mail is somewhat like the National Enquirer of England, but maybe that's what it takes uh, to help uh, send a two-by-four up against people's heads. So this is the Daily Mail's main climate change story of the week. Sea levels could rise by twice as much as scientists had predicted by 2100 swallowing entire cities and putting the lives of millions at risk. No shit, Sherlock. And what I like about the Daily Mail is they just, uh, they, they do this little summary at the top. No <coughs> Excuse me, I, I didn't even let me say anything. Experts use 25 years of satellite data and the first analysis of its kind and they found that they found globally uh, sea levels have risen up the shore by an extra millimeter per decade, which doesn't sound like much, which any of the Alex Jones ass lickers say one millimeter a decade. Well, this means that uh, at this rate, and this is the operative thing that the story never talks about, the sea level will rise by an additional two feet by the end of the, the end of the century. Uh, if you if you just head out to 2100 at the but this you understand that it was already at three millimeters and now since about the early 90s it, it's been bumped up again by uh, by another millimeter. Uh, so, well, you know, what this story and so many of these stories talk about is, uh, okay, 
So since 1993, we've added an extra, an extra millimeter per decade. So somehow an ex, one extra millimeter was, was added. So now what they're doing is, is making the assumption that it's just going to be one millimeter more per decade. And that one millimeter decade it, it, per decade isn't get, getting ready to explode. So you can throw this shit out the window, as we'll see in 25 years. They'll be saying, wow, we predicted back in 2018 one extra millimeter of sea level rise per decade, and we're seeing 10 or whatever. So for a little more toned down, less alarmist, let's go over here, there's many versions of this story. This is the French news service being a little cooler in its language. Sea level rise is accelerating, according to new study. Sea level rise is accelerating and could reach 26 inches by century's end could reach 26 inches by 2100. Which is in line with United Nations estimates and enough to cause significant problems for coastal cities. There you go. Uh, anyway, uh, so what is causing this? Uh, this acceleration driven mainly by accelerated melting in Greenland and Antarctica has the potential to double the total sea level rise by 2100 as compared to earlier projections that assumed a constant rate. So now uh, they've raised it from uh, 30 to more than 60. This is study author Steve Naram. Quote, and this is almost certainly a conservative estimate. A conservative estimate. Yeah, that's the understatement of the year. Uh, 26 inches between now and 2100. Pull your head out of your ass. Anyway, from sea level rise to the to this debate, uh, the Atlantic Magazine, good old Atlantic Magazine, looking at the, uh, the never-ending debate, the question, does climate change cause more war? The answer to the question is yes, it does, but uh, you better believe in a few more decades there will be no debate on this question. Climate change will be one of the single leading causes of war on the planet. And so I'm just going to read the, uh, the first few paragraphs of this excellent article in The Atlantic weighing in on this debate. It is one of the most important questions of the 21st century. Will climate change provide the extra spark that pushes two, two otherwise peaceful nations into war? To my ass, try a hundred and two. Two nations, anyway. In the past five years, a growing body of research spanning economics, political science, and ancient and modern history has argued that, that it can and will, that climate change can cause more wars and will cause more wars. Uh, one team of economists has, has argued that an, an empirical connection between violence and climate change persists across 12,000 years of human history. Um, then they talk about how climate change helps Syria get pushed into civil war. Uh, if you live 
on a planet expecting changes to temperature or rainfall in the coming decades, which will come faster and stronger than the many natural climate changes of the past, it is all a bit worrying. All a bit worrying, do you think so? And then they just dive into this whole debate, which uh, this is just one of these many cases where you can just, you know, you can confirm your bias by I anywhere you stand on this. You can go on the internet and find somebody uh, to suit your level of, uh, of bias. Uh, but anyway, let's go over to Donald Trump's own intelligence chief. U.S. Intel chief issues warning about climate change. This is Director of National Intelligence Dan Coates uh, warned of the dangers of climate change in testimony at odds with the skepticism of other members of the Trump administration, such as Donald Trump. Uh, as he issued a warning on Tuesday about the dangers of climate change. So we're going to quote the uh, Dan Coates, Director of National Intelligence. Finally, maybe somebody uh, in the intelligence community actually has a little bit of intelligence. Take it away, Intelligence Chief. <clears throat> quote, the impacts of the long-term trends toward a warming climate, more air pollution, biodiversity loss, and water scarcity are likely to fuel economic and social discontent and possibly upheaval through 2018. Um, extreme weather events in a warmer world have the potential for greater impacts and can compound with other drivers to raise the risk of humanitarian disasters, conflict, water and food shortages, population migration, labor shortfalls, price shocks, and power outages, domestic Policy responses to such issues will become more difficult, especially for democracies, as publics become less trusting of authoritative information sources, Coates said. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't wait to... Uh, I would love to hear uh, the reaming that uh, our intelligence chief got from our clueless moron in chief after making that statement. Okay, obviously I did not get this from the mainstream media. I can't remember what Alert Tribes member sent me this in. Uh, this is Robert Scribbler. I have mentioned this man before. I need to keep track of Robert Scribbler better than I do. So this is off of his um, blog post, I think from two or three days ago. <clears throat> Take it away, Robert. Arctic sea ice extent as, at record lows as winter temperatures soar. 5.5 degrees Celsius above average. That's how much warmer than normal the entire region of the Arctic above the 66 degrees north latitude line was uh, earlier this week. Areas within this large warm pool saw temperatures spike to a range of 15 to 25 degrees Celsius warmer than the already warmer than normal 1981 to 2010 base period. 
and broad regions of the Arctic saw temperatures between 10 and 20 C above that 30 year average. Um, day after day, week after week, month after month, the story has been much the same throughout the fall and winter of 2017 to 2018. And like last year, the sea ice has taken a considerable pounding. Yesterday, I think maybe well, earlier this week, it dropped to a new record low extent. Uh, good Lord. Uh, then he shows the, the over the cliff graph. Uh, anyone who does not know what an over the cliff collapse looks like, it is the, it is the inverse of the hockey stick graph. Uh, the primary cause of these ice losses is warming both of the oceans and of the air in the Arctic. And as we can see in this ongoing trend, the Arctic is getting more than its fair share of both. Such polar amplification is a direct upshot of the massive volume of harmful greenhouse gases being injected into the atmosphere through fossil fuel burning. And we are seeing the dark fruits of that burning now in the massive and ongoing winter losses of sea ice. The harm to various Arctic life forms from puffins to polar bears and the risk of increasing sea level rise, ocean circulation, ocean destabilization, and ex increasingly extreme weather events that all result from the heating up of polar environments. Thank you. Uh, I, I love it looking at this map showing Texas where I came back from Florida being colder than usual uh, since about the day I got here while Florida where which was freezing when I was down there is now warmer than usual. If I had stayed in Florida I wouldn't be sitting here in front of a fucking uh, propane heater with a goose down vest on. Okay, touched on this. I'm gonna let's get a, a little deeper into this. I'm sorry it got eaten what publication this is on, but there are several versions of this story. Just not sure which news service this is. Climate change could unleash vast reserves of toxic mercury from the Arctic permafrost. No shit, A new potential threat from global warming has now emerged and this time it is truly toxic. New research into the composition of the frozen ground in the Arctic has revealed the single largest reserve of mercury on the planet. Mercury, a toxic metal, metal that has been regulated the world over due to its ability to poison wildlife and humans, is locked in the Arctic permafrost right now and has been safely contained there for the entirety of human civilization. But as worldwide temperatures rise, that will change, releasing as much as 15 million gallons of mercury. This is this research published in Geophysical Research Letters. What the scientists found was a wealth of mercury that has no rival. The amount of mercury locked in the frozen ground of the Arctic dwarfs all of the mercury mankind has ever used by a factor of 10 and is roughly double the estimated amount of mercury that is currently present in the rest of the ground, water, and air of the entire 
planet. Uh, mercury can cause severe damage to organs including the brain and because it builds up in the bodies of animals it can be passed uh, through the food chain mainly from people eating fish to uh, an excellent way to die of mercury poisoning. Needless to say, the release of millions of gallons of mercury into our ocean water from melting permafrost could be catastrophic to sea life and everything that relies on it, including the human race. Okay, let's go from sea level rise to uh, World War III to mercury uh, poisoning. Let's move over to the methane bomb, but we're not going to talk in this, uh, in this story about the methane bomb uh, blowing off there in the melting permafrost along with its new sister, the mercury bomb, blowing off up there and the anthrax bomb and every other kind of fucking bomb. We're going to go right here to our own public lands uh, where we see in their own words, Interior Department admits it is helping oil and gas companies at the expense of taxpayers and clean air. And uh, th this, th this particular story doesn't uh, address, it just touches on the, uh, the dots between uh, rising levels of methane and, and climate change and abrupt climate change but uh, you, can, you can draw your own dots here. At the direction of, an, of Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke, the Bureau of Land Management has announced it will effectively eliminate a rule designed to reduce wasted natural gas from drilling operations on our public lands. The BLM Methane Waste Rule, finalized in 2016, required oil and gas companies to detect and repair leaks of methane and to limit the venting and flaring of natural gas into the atmosphere. The common sense policy ensured more natural gas, which is just another word for methane, would be captured. The oil and gas industry has long tried to get rid of the BLM methane rule and the Koch brothers funded Freedom Partler Partners highlighted it on the group's wish list of policies to eliminate. Um, uh, now uh, they have gotten their wish and a reading of the BLM's own documents shows that eliminating the methane waste rule is a massive giveaway to oil and gas companies that will cost taxpayers millions of dollars. And uh, while this article deals mostly with this absolute giveaway to uh, big gas uh, big oil and big gas, uh, the, the bigger story is you don't need to go to the fucking melting permafrost in the Arctic to find the methane bomb blowing. It is blowing all over our public lands. Probably where the uh, methane heating my house came from. Speaking of leaking methane, uh, my goddamn stove is obviously leaking methane and I'm going to deal with that tomorrow. Probably get my goddamn propane tank locked by the gas company. Anyway, what is going on in the southwest U.S.? 
water forecast is bleak for major reservoirs in southwest U.S. One of the most important reservoirs in the southwestern U.S. will likely collect less than half its normal amount of spring runoff this year because of a warm, dry winter across much of the region, forecaster said Wednesday. Lake Powell, which straddles Utah and Arizona, is expected to get about 47 percent of its average inflow because of scant snow in the mountains the, that feed the Colorado River. Uh, according to Greg Smith, a hydrologist, uh, looking at this, quote, things are looking pretty grim. Things are looking pretty grim. Do you think so? Uh, Greg, uh, you know, guys, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna split, do I split this up or, or not? Well, let me charge on ahead. Uh, okay, I mentioned this story last week from the New York Times doing this long piece about why why people are nixing having kids because of climate change, and I cannot believe it. Tucker Carlson from Fox News has picked up this story, and Fox News, and good old Tucker, uh, looking into this, um, looking at the trend behind the growing number of people considering not having children because it is bad for the environment. So uh, my guess is that Tucker, this is a video, Matt, that Tucker is laughing at people uh, not having kids, but at least he's talking about it. On uh, to those clueless fucking morons at Fox News. Okay, speaking of network coverage of climate change, um... Uh, many versions of this story. This is HuffPost spin on it. TV networks did a really crap job reporting on climate change last year. Many of America's leading television networks did a poor job of covering climate change last year even as the newly minted Trump administration work to unravel regulations meant to tackle the phenomenon and the U.S. was pummeled by a series of record-breaking natural disasters. According to this new report by Media Matters for America, um, so they analyzed climate change coverage on the major broadcasters nightly news programs and Sunday morning political shows. So they added up the entire year of 2017 for ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox News, and even PBS. And over the course of 2017, how many minutes? on every one of those networks combined for an entire year we see 260 minutes for about four and a half hours in the entire year from every major network combined uh, four and a half hours were devoted to climate change during that year and then the big asterisk next to that uh, is that almost all of that, of that miserable coverage, 79% of the climb, of the four and a half hours, 79% of that time was related to actions taken by the Trump administration rather than explanatory reports about the phenomenon of climate change itself or the way it affects humans or extreme weather. 
and often the networks use talking points furthered by climate change deniers, including Donald Trump, without refuting such claims or clarifying in their reporting that an overwhelming majority of scientists believe that climate change is happening and that humans are the primary cause of it. Uh, this is uh, quoting the Media Matters report, quote, broadcast TV news neglected many critical climate change stories in 2017 while devoting most of its climate coverage to President Donald Trump. The networks undercover undercovered or ignored the ways that climate change have real-life impacts on people, the economy, national security, and the year's extreme weather events. A major oversight in a year when weather disasters killed hundreds of Americans, displaced hundreds of thousands more, and cost the economy in excess of $300 billion. Oh, shit, but at least uh, one of these stories, Think Progress, is saying, well, let's try to find some bright spot in, in, in this report. And they say, well, uh, well, one thing you can take away from this miserable report is that Trump's climate denial backfires and drives more media coverage of the issue, how the climate change denying president is in fact getting more people to think and talk about climate change. And, and, and they probably have a point that if, uh, if, if Donald Trump uh, was not up there, if, if, if Hillary Clinton had one, uh, my guess is there would have been a hell of a lot less climate change reporting than in Donald Trump. I mean, like 80% of it was on Donald Trump. So at least, uh, it, it, at least Donald Trump is bringing some discussion of the, of the issue uh, to network TV. And of course, as this story points out, by far in a way, the number one story on uh, network TV about climate change, the num I mean, far and away, uh, was Donald Trump pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, as I have said many times, I fully support Donald Trump pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Of course, he did it for all the wrong reasons, and Donald Trump pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement does not even rate in the top 10,000 stories about climate change unrolling on this planet. It, 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 it has no bearing on what's going on on this planet. The number one story being reported on uh, network TV. Anyway, so, wow. Here's a real no shit Sherlock headline from that headline to this one. The word climate is not mentioned one time in Trump's infrastructure plan. The White House managed to put together a 53 page proposal for fixing the nation's crumbling roads, bridges, and airports that completely ignores one of the, the major threats to that very infrastructure, climate change. The plan released yet released on Monday includes not one single mention of the words climate, warming, resilience, or disaster. Instead, it calls for a one and a half trillion dollar investment in infrastructure and for rolling back key environmental protections that Trump and his team see as obstacles to e economic growth. 
uh, the omission is unsurprising uh, coming from an administration that has derailed America's actions to combat the climate crisis, but it is no less infuriating for progressives and environmentalists. <laughs> it, 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 anyway, this is uh, Raul Grijalva, Democrat from Arizona, the ranking member on the House Natural Resources Committee, told HuffPost via email, quote, the lack of any mention of the need to respond to climate change is just one more example of how unserious the Trump, the Trump infrastructure plan really is. You would think they could at least focus on refurbishing roads and bridges and coastal communities so people have the emergency evacuation routes they are going to need. But, nope. Okay, and uh, going along with that story, Trump budget, budget cuts renewable energy and ups nuclear weapons spending. U.S. President Donald Trump's proposed budget cuts spending by more than 65% for a federal research office on renewable uh, energy and efficiency. Uh, the budget called for the office to be cut by $1.3 billion compared to last year, down to $696 million for 2019. Now guys, I don't want, I don't want anyone to think that because I put this story in here that I think renewable energy is going to do a goddamn thing to save the planet. It's just one more example of why we're so fucked. But uh, let's go over to the uh, apocalyptist, clueless fucking morons to round out this. And uh, this story, which might have come from The Guardian, I'm not sure, talking about this clueless bitch, uh, working for Greenpeace. I don't know. She's one of the big guns in Greenpeace. This clueless bitch, Jennifer Morganby. Uh, oh, no, Jennifer Morgan. Uh, and her, this is from Al Jazeera, uh, an opinion piece from this Greenpeace uh, activist, Jennifer Morgan, we can still win the fight against climate change. No shit, yes, uh, let's just jump down to the very bottom. Uh, so, of course, she is talking about how the renewable, anyway, it's renewable energy, renewable energy is going to save the planet from uh, climate change. <clears throat> These developments in renewable energy that uh, Donald Trump is squashing give me hope. Give me hope that unproven and potentially unsustainable technological fixes proposed for gar carbon dioxide removal or geoengineering of the atmosphere will not be needed to achieve a one and a half degree C world. Uh, so she's actually talking that we're going to keep global to that uh, renewable energy is going to keep the the temperature from rising by one and a half degrees. This bitch has her head stuffed so far up her ass. The next few years are crucial. We have a moral, ethical responsibility to seize 
this small window of opportunity we still have to make bold and lasting change to deliver true climate security for us all. And you wonder why your old eco-Nazi thinks these goddamn clueless fucking greenwashed limp dick mainstream environmentalists uh, make me almost as sick as the fucking Cook brothers and these climate change deniers. I love the final sentence of this. Uh, the views expressed in this article are the author's own and do not necessarily reflect Al Jazeera's editorial stance. <laughs> All right, let's go over to the New York Post, which is kind of the uh, New York's version of, of England's Daily Mail. An erupting volcano could save Earth from humanity. Yes, uh, NASA researchers and scientists are discussing rapid response efforts in Bali to take a advantage of a rare event and potentially save the world from climate change. Uh, so they're over there uh, looking at this exploding volcano, Mount Agung, and scientists hope that by tracking Mount Agung's eruption, they will be able to learn more about how chemicals released into the atmosphere might be used to fight climate change. So what they're talking about is geoengineering, uh, solar radiation management, otherwise known as chemtrails, watching, studying volcanoes. So as my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero is cheering this on, uh, Paul Beckwith would be cheering these guys on for figuring out how we are going to become an, a, an anthropogenic volcano to reflect uh, sunlight back into uh, space to save humanity from itself. But we're going to wind up with this story. I already mentioned it in my Clueless Moron Roundup rant on Saturday, on Saturday but a good place to wrap up uh, my climate change Roundup rant. EPA's Scott Pruitt suggests global warming may not be a bad thing for humans. Scott Pruitt, the administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, alluded earlier this week that global warming may be beneficial to humans, once again questioning the world's leading scientist who have declared the FOB phenomenon one of the greatest known threats to humanity. In an interview that aired uh, on, a, on a Nevada television station, Pruitt questioned how accurately scientists could predict the planet's ideal temperature in 2100 or even this year, and said that humans had, quote, flourished in times of past warmth. Okay, wrap this up, Scott Pruitt. Quote, we know humans have most flourished during times of warming trends. I think there's assumptions being made that because the climate is warming, that is necessarily a bad thing. Do we really know what the ideal surface temperature should be in the year 2100 or in the year 2018. That's fairly arrogant for us to think that we know exactly what it should be in 2100. 
Oh, during uh, during Tuesday's interview, Pruitt also said he wanted to foster quote an honest, transparent debate about what we know and what we don't know, so the American people can be informed and make decisions on their own. The one thing we don't know is just how fucked we are. Are we a little bit fucked? Are we, as Derek Jensen would say, so fucked? Are we really so fucked? But anyway, guys, I got to wrap up this uh, week's edition of my climate change meltdown roundup rant and uh, crank up my leaking methane stove. Uh, maybe for the last time before the gas company comes out here tomorrow and shuts off my propane, which means I will have no heat, no hot water, and no stove until I spend hundreds of dollars uh, on a new stove uh, to stop the methane leak in my house before I blow it to kingdom come. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We are so fucked. Bye, guys. Yes, very impressive.